Well, we get day two of geopolitics, human rights, and sports all colliding in a way that nobody saw coming. I would suggest up front, somebody in the talk show business did tell you this was coming a couple of months ago. But the sports part of this is is really secondary to the geopolitics. So let's do it this way. If you're scoring at home, it's Saudi sports washing one, United States one. we got a tie game. In the world of geopolitics... Something that nobody had predicted. It's a, it's a score for the U.S. here. You're going to hear the term a lot. Uh, I tweeted it out today. It's I, I mean, I wish there was a better term, but it has been around for a long time. Just so you know, when it comes up again, sport washing, sports washing, actually, is a term used to describe countries that use high-profile sports and athletes to distract from political and human rights controversies. It really got its start with the slimy Olympics and the very slimy International Olympic Committee, who would often, as they've proven the past several years, get in bed with pretty awful places in the name of making money and trying to whitewash human rights violations. So sport washing is a term that's been around. The Saudis have mastered the art of sport washing by spending insane amounts of money to buy stars, the World Cup, you name it. They've taken it to a new level. The Saudis have gobbled up some of the best golfers in the world with the Live Golf Tour. We talked about that. You know that story by now, which has got a bunch of levels, too. Um, Now they've been in the process of buying the world's biggest soccer stars, and that's been going on for a few months. And they're tossing 100 to $200 million contracts at these sports stars. These are people that get to live tax-free, too, I might add. Cristiano Ronaldo, they just signed a guy out of France, out of Spain, I should say. So they've been throwing around a couple hundred million dollars to gobble up sports stars as well. Now, that's kind of the backdrop to all of this. I don't see how anyone, just to be fair, I don't see how anyone, any athlete... And I don't care how successful you are. I don't see how anybody can turn down $400 million a year. I got to tell you, I just, I know you're going to say, but Jeff, uh, were you not implying yesterday that the Saudi money is blood money? Yeah, it is, kind of. But I can see how somebody can reconcile that relationship for $400 million a year. Who turns that down? And the answer is nobody until now. Yeah, somebody turned it down. You're tax-free, man. You get whatever you want. $400 million. As I like to say to my kids, you should only have to make $400 million once. Got it? No athlete, nobody turns down $400 million until now. That's what he was reportedly offered to play in Saudi Arabia. That's $400 million per year, and it was turned down. It happened. Somebody said no. That's why it's Saudi Arabia 1, United States 1. It also happened with the biggest star on the planet, fresh off a World Cup win, Lionel Messi, according to Yahoo News. Um, if you don't know who that is, just ask your kids. They probably have the shirt. Not only told the Saudis no, (laughs) okay, he said no to $400 million a year. And even if you say, oh, Jeff, there's no way that could be true, you're wrong. Cristiano Ronaldo got got almost $200 million a season to go and dance around in his underwear, basically. So he not only told them no, he told the entire world no. And that's because he's coming to play in the United States in the MLS. Just for the record, I did mention that a couple of months ago. I didn't think I thought it would happen. I mean, I didn't think anyone would turn down $400 million. So he has reportedly announced he's going to play in the MLS. I looked. No, they are not an Austin schedule. If they were an Austin schedule, the ticket price just went up 10 times. But I don't think they're on Austin schedule. Now, I'll spare you the conversation because I think 95% of you could care less, although I could maybe work it in every now and then. I'll spare you the conversation about Messi the player and instead talk about the context of what this means, not just in sport washing, but what is what is being tried again in American soccer. Okay, This is not new. OK, 
okay? I don't think this does what a lot of people automatically think because this has been done countless times. And I know you're going to say, but there's no one a bigger star in the world than Messi today or LeBron James today. Yes, they're the biggest stars today. But there have been generations of professional soccer teams. I give you, if you're really old, I give you the New York Cosmos. The New York Cosmos were a team in the North American Soccer League in the 70s. They signed the greatest player to ever live, Pele. They brought him to the U.S. Then they loaded up the entire team. They were the rock stars of rock stars. Rock stars would go to the game just to go get their autographs. So they, they, they filled the team up with aging stars, thinking that would jumpstart American soccer, American professional soccer. It didn't work. It didn't. So every time you throw a superstar who comes over here to hang out and retire, it doesn't really make that much of a dent. Now, Messi's on a different planet, and someone could debate. He's a difference maker. But I do think you need to understand for all the excitement that this is creating in the MLS. And look, the MLS is a good league. It's a good league not because you throw in aging stars. It's a good league because you've got generations of young players that are now good players. It, the league is the league has quality throughout, and the league is marketable because you have generations of people that now think, hey, going to a, a soccer stadium is a, is a cool thing to do. So what you're getting is you're not getting Michael Jordan for the Bulls. You're getting Michael Jordan for the Wizards. That's what you're getting. So I'm not quite sure the soccer impact is as big of a deal as people are going to want to make it out to be. The geopolitical part of this is pretty fascinating, particularly when it's one day after the Saudis got a huge win with the Live Golf Tour merger, which, of course, has now produced predictably some backlash from 9-11 families who are saying that's just trash. And they're right. They're right, by the way. Okay, so first up, Yahoo News reports this. Um, And it says this, in a monumental move that could alter the course of Major League Soccer. I'll stop there. I don't think that's true. You want it to be true. Common sense would tell you that's true, but I don't think history has it. It it, it just doesn't work that way. Oh, it's neat. It's cool. And, you know, every one of your kids and you would want to go get an autograph and take a picture. But I don't think it automatically makes the league that much better. But I hate to pour water on it. Lionel Messi has decided to sign with Inter Miami. By the way, they're in last place. Uh, Neither Messi nor Miami has announced a decision or details of their agreement. But after two two days of momentum, after years of pursuit, MLS and Miami appear to have won a three-horse race to sign the world's greatest player. The deal ideally or likely and reportedly includes commercial contracts with Apple and Adidas, two key MLS partners. It could also give Messi an option to purchase a stake in the club, which is kind of this new and interesting. This is how you know athletes now are making so much money, they now have interest in buying clubs. It's like the new cool thing to do. Uh, J.J. Watt just did it with a British soccer team. The cool thing to do is say, I own part of a team. Um reportedly he turned <laughs> he turned down a lucrative offer in Saudi Arabia for 400 million dollars a year i will promise you whoever is in the mls is not offering 400 million dollars a year they're not offering a fourth of that there's far more to this in his decision which makes it pretty interesting by itself there's far more to it than just this guy you know wanting to find the biggest contract he can late in his career All right, so then there is, I thought this was pretty well done. This is, um, by the way, the team sucks. Inner Miami sucks. They just fired their coach. David Beckham runs the team, which is ironic because he was a megastar, a shirtless megastar when he came to play in the MLS. And yeah, it helped the league some, but he didn't transform the game as you know it. Messi is doing this for the long term. This is a really well thought out, Commentary. This is on ESPN FC, which is sort of their uh, their soccer version of of their site. Um, it's I don't, I don't remember who it was. I think it's a Spanish broadcaster because Lionel Messi had been playing in France, and the belief was he would go back to Barcelona to play in Spain. Instead, he makes this announcement. This is pretty well thought out. Why he even did it? 
Whether you love or hate Lionel Messi and Inter Miami, it's important to understand that this is actually more Messi the businessman and less Messi the player. Messi and his family have always been interested in living and growing his empire in the US. And with MLS's reported offerings alongside Apple and Adidas already set partners of the World Cup champion, then Messi in South Beach makes more sense than you think. The romanticism of returning to Barcelona and one last dance in Europe or the financial grandiosity of Al Hilal and Saudi Arabia were always going to be a possibility, more so the former. But in the end, the stumbling, hiccuping and zero assurances to Messi's team made Inter Miami even that more desirable. Look, culturally speaking, this works for Messi, Antonella, and their children. His life as a South American and Spanish speaker in the capital of Latin America is always going to be enticing. Remember, this decision is not just on him. Antonella drives much of the narrative, and I'm sure this is a major component. Messi also owns real estate in the area, and the growing Messi brand and empire, especially in a city that's going to be hosting teams in the World Cup in 2026, will also be a major selling point. Look, in terms of football, Inter Miami is last in the East right now with no manager after saying goodbye to Phil Neville. So there is a lot to do in order to bring that team to a positive trajectory. But my God, no matter the outcome in a league with no relegation that keeps on growing and developing, the process can be a success no matter what. Messi's contract ends with PSG at the end of the month, so we wouldn't see La Pulga in Miami until at least July. There wouldn't be limits to his pay as well as he would be a designated player. Look, the key here is the partnerships, the deals with Adidas and Apple in order to maximize the best of his arrival and his time at Inter Miami and MLS. It's amazing to think that the man who was responsible for changing the face of MLS in 2007, David Beckham, is now partly responsible once again for changing it with the arrival of Lionel Messi. Yeah, that's a good point. It's well thought out. I mean, apparently his family, I mean, this was 400 million is 400 million. It's 400 million. It's 400 million for him to go prance around the field, and not do a heck of a lot. But he turned it down. And I, I think this commentary is probably spot on that he did it because his family wanted to do it. He wanted to get involved with Apple. He wanted to get more involved with Adidas. That, that's the weird socket. The sport part of this, I mean, at some level, it's going to be weird to say this is so politically incorrect, but at some level, as someone who knows what they're talking about with soccer, it's, it's a little disappointing in that th- there's generations of washed up great players that have come to the U.S. to do nothing but tra- walk around the field, sign autographs and get endorsement deals. It doesn't make the game that much better. He can if he wants. Like I said, I, I, you're not getting Michael Jordan in his prime. You're not getting LeBron even later on. You're getting a guy whose family wants to live here. You're getting a guy who wants to be a part of Apple. You're getting a guy, a megastar, who's done it all. There's nothing left for him to do. This is, you know, this is the Jordan of soccer it, who, who doesn't want to get hurt, and he wants to hang out with his family and enjoy Florida. And own some real estate. That, that's what you're getting soccer-wise. So it's a, it's a ceremonial deal. It's pretty cool, I guess. It'll draw interest. But it's not going to all of a sudden, because this has happened so many times, well, this is going to make soccer popular automatically. Soccer is already relatively popular. The league is on a trajectory. It's a good league, not great. Um, bringing this guy in is not going to make it the Premier League or something like that. It'll, it'll just make it better, make it cool to go see. And he'll make a ton of money doing whatever he wants. But the fact that it happened the day after the Live Golf Tour announcement, to me, is pretty interesting. I don't know that I know enough to say it's intentional, but I can't imagine. Think about this. So the Saudi, the royal family puts together these collectives. It's sort of like NIL with some blood money. And they put these collectives together and say, go buy that team, go buy that player, no matter what it cost. They had to believe for $400 million, they were going to get Lionel Messi. So somebody now, whoever is next, you're going to be offered $500 million. They'll spend anything on sports, obviously. Whoever's next, the next star who's probably not Messi, but you're lucky. Whoever gets that next phone call, even though it's scary, you're going to have, your agent's going to say, you're not going to believe this. I think they're going to pay you $500 million because Messi turned him down for four. 
and they're mad, and they think it makes them look bad. In some ways, it does make the sport-washing Saudis look kind of bad. It's uh, for all the feel-good stuff that came the Saudis, for all the feel-good part of the Live Golf Tour and the PGA Tour merger yesterday, and you know, they got a chance to say, "Look, we can't be that bad. You can't, you can't say terrible things about us. Look, we're here in your own country, hanging out at country clubs, partnering with the PGA. So all the good PR they think they got out of that, they got burned by this deal today.